All right, welcome back to today's verdict. I'm your host, David Lesh. We are always encouraging you to stay connected, so tweet me at David Lesh. Millions of New Yorkers will be able to get Medicaid coverage for dental implants, root canals, and other vital dental procedures as part of a settlement in a federal class action lawsuit. Here to tell us more is attorney Belkis Garcia from the Legal Aid Society, and we love the Legal Aid Society. <laughs> Listen, now, full, full disclosure, I am married to a dentist. Right. So I know a little bit about um, root canals and crowns, and they're not inexpensive, um, and no one's loving root canals, but... Um, <laughs> What was the, um, the impetus behind this particular legislation? Why teeth? Yeah. Well, um, at the Legal Aid Society, we have a health law practice that does individual representation, and we have a helpline where people call about various issues, health law issues that they need assistance with. And the dental calls were the ones that we would get so often that there were very few good, clear legal remedies for people who are being denied Medicaid coverage for dental care because New York has an incredibly limited dental benefit. And it was a priority for us to be able to give people options, which, and in order to do that, we needed to change the rules. Let's take a step back a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Medicaid ge in sure. generally. Maybe you could just tell the viewers a little bit about what Medicaid is, you know, the, the, the program itself and who would or would not qualify. Sure. Medicaid is a joint federal, state, and locally run program. It's primarily run by the states. And it is health insurance coverage for primarily low-income people and people with disabilities. Um, so in order to qualify, you need to be, uh, you need to have, you need to be poor enough, you need to have low enough income in order to qualify for uh, Medicaid. Now, in the past, prior to this, what was the, um, the rule that was followed with respect to your own teeth and whether or not you could get Medicaid to pay for certain services. Right, so this case is about, or uh, focuses on four specific services, root canals, crowns, dental implants, and replacement dentures, as you said. Um, and there are different rules for each of them. Right. Uh, the case is about people over 21, which are considered adults in the Medicaid program, if you're over 21. Um, and the rules were different for each of, those pro each of those services. For dental implants, at the time that we brought the case, they were never covered under any circumstances. And by the way, this was back in 2018. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, replacement dentures, at the time that we filed, were covered um, only every eight years. Um, and then there were some exceptions so to that. So what did that mean? You broke your dentures, you had an accident or there was an issue, you had to wait eight years to get new teeth? That's right. All right. Horrible. With some with some exceptions, exceptions. Okay. Um, for root canals for over the age of 21, they're generally not covered. Uh, that's primarily the rule. Again, there are a few uh, limited exceptions, being that if you need a, to save a tooth in order uh, to keep your denture in place, that would be an instance in which the program would pay for root canals. But primarily, they were not covered. Um, and the same thing for crowns. Well, I found interesting now with with the, with the new legislation, or the new law, should I say, um, with respect to the requirement of the root canal, you need your four back molars to be touching each other. Now, what was that about? What was right. the reason so that, for that? That's the, that's, that is the rule, the current rule, and one of the ones we were looking to challenge. So it's called the eight points of contact rule. Okay. And it says that, if, as you said, if you have four teeth or eight teeth that touch in the back of your mouth, that that's enough to function. That's what New York's Medicaid program says. So if you needed treatment on any other back tooth, if you had those four teeth, four teeth, um, that, that's, that that was but enough. That's and they would need. just pull the rest of them. Wow. And under the new rule, under the settlement, it inverts that rule. So what we're trying to do is to preserve natural teeth where possible and where appropriate. Where's the pushback on this? Are there, are there dentists who aren't happy with this or, or because they're not getting paid from private insurance? Mm -hmm. Where There's always pushback somewhere. Where are you feeling the, the heat on this? I mean, I would hope that dentists who accept the Medicaid program would not be pushing back because it means they are going to get paid. You know, right. the, the rates in the Medicaid program are a different issue, right. but they will be able to get reimbursement for care that they're providing to Medicaid enrollees. Um, the pushback. Uh, I think any expansion of the Medicaid benefit uh, is there's some pushback about the expense. The and expense. And the, obviously, the Republicans are always push back on right. that. Um, but, but what is your sense in New York at this point? Are we turning a corner where we're really looking at those who don't have 
and helping them get the medical benefits that they really deserve. What is what are, what are your thoughts, at least? Legal I hope so. I think that's right. I mean, I, I hope that with this settlement and this expansion that it will bring some awareness to how important oral health is and how it's tied into our overall health, our mental health. It's such an incredibly important part of health care. Um, and I think I am seeing that people are learning more and, and uh coming to agree and accept that it, how important it well, is. Well, we were even you know, talking about, you talking about this off camera that uh, at least from what I've been told, you have poor hygiene or have bad you know, uh, issues with your teeth can lead to heart disease, could lead to That's so right. many other medical issues. That's right. Um, was this one of the impetuses for making the change? Absolutely. The, we brought the case exactly when we did because we had a client who was very ill and his health care, his, I'm sorry, his physical health was so intertwined with his oral health and he had no teeth and he had a prescribed diet that he could not follow and he was getting sicker because he couldn't get teeth and he needed dental implants in order to hold dentures in place. Um, and that, that he was the reason why we brought the case so when we did. How are you getting the word out? How are you letting other than, you know, this show obviously, but how else are you getting the word out? So when uh, the, the settlement is uh, subject to the court's approval, so when okay. that happens, uh, the Department of Health will provide some training. There will be a notice uh, to, uh, that will go out to, about, the, about the settlement in some hospitals and some Medicaid offices. Um, and we are doing everything we can to get the word out to talk to people about well, these legal aid always, changes. Legal aid does, always does such, such great um, things. That's why we love having you on. What, are, what else are you working on? Any other interesting things that you have uh, cooking uh, up at Legal Aid? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that's happening, so I focus on healthcare and Medicaid specifically, and a thing that's happening right now is we're watching really closely this, what they call the unwind of the public health emergency, which what, is... What does that mean? It is that every Medicaid recipient needs to be uh, reevaluated for their eligibility for Medicaid, because during the public health emergency, everybody's case was supposed to, Medicaid case was supposed to stay open, regardless of a change of circumstances. With the end of the COVID public health emergency, now everybody needs to be reassessed, reassessed. and it's a huge undertaking. How do you do that? You just have doctors reviewing them? No, or looking, this is the state. It's, it's financial. Yeah, okay. this, it's, it's all of the eligibility requirements. So the state is looking at that. It's a big undertaking, and we're, we're following it pretty closely. And uh, are you in favor of that or not in favor of that? I mean, I think people should be able to keep their health insurance all the time, and uh, nobody should lose their health insurance fair. because of paperwork. Um, but it's a requirement and the state has to do it well. Okay. Um, and you'll come back and give us an update of what's been going on uh, with uh, everything at the office. Okay. I will.